So let's finish up by putting all of this together to get our picture for what we think the universe looks like today. We saw this picture before. Remember that massive objects cause space-time to bend around them. However, the total amount of mass and energy in the universe can also result in overall curvature of the universe itself. And what that means is that the apparent size of these spots in the cosmic microwave background radiation depends on the curvature of the universe. As with the galaxy clusters, the curvature bends the paths of light. And the result is that the apparent size of these spots that correspond to temperature variations in the cosmic microwave background depend on the curvature of the universe. So this means that by measuring the sizes of these spots, we can determine the curvature and the amount of mass and energy that the universe contains. We can distinguish a low density universe from a high density universe and identify a universe that has exactly the right amount of matter to make it not curved at all. A low density universe would make the spots look smaller as you see on the left with a little curved surface giving you an analogy for what type of curvature that would be. A high density universe with a different type of curvature makes the spots look larger as you see in the picture on the right. Our universe, however, is flat. We can now make very precise measurements of the sizes of these spots in the cosmic microwave background radiation. And what that tells us is that the universe has exactly the right amount of matter to not be curved at all. We've learned already that we need to have ordinary matter, dark matter, and dark energy. And this test with these spots in the cosmic microwave background now tells us what the total is. We can therefore put this picture together, giving us our complete model of the universe, or at least to the best of our ability today. Obviously, it has large parts which are completely unknown. So let's recap. We have 26%, which is made up of dark matter. This is matter that is invisible. It doesn't interact with light or ordinary matter. We can see its gravitational effects when we look at the rotation speeds of galaxies and the masses of galaxy clusters. We know that it has to be there because the abundances of light elements like hydrogen and helium and lithium wouldn't be what they are today unless most of the matter in the universe was not ordinary matter. We also know that the sizes of galaxies and galaxy clusters today require that most of the matter is dark matter. Otherwise, there would not have been enough time for them to grow as big as they are. So via all of these lines of evidence, we know that about 26% of the total mass and energy in the universe is dark matter. 69% is this stuff that we call dark energy. We see this from observations of those supernovae, which show us that the expansion rate of the universe is increasing with time. The universe is accelerating. We also have measurements of the cosmic microwave background radiation, which tell us the overall structure of the universe. It is flat, it is not curved. This gives us the total density of stuff that there must be. And what's left is 5% there at the top. 
that 5% is you and me and stars and planets and everything that you have ever seen. The rest of this is stuff that we don't yet understand. It's a little bit disconcerting. 95% of the universe is invisible and not yet understood. So you can see that there is a whole lot of work yet to do to understand our universe today. Hopefully, if you come back in a few years, we'll be able to tell you that we've solved some of these problems. So thank you for listening. <laughs>